Welcome to Grappling with Gray, a forum for promoting an ethical mindset and ethical decision making to help us more clearly see both sides of complex issues and better navigate the moral challenges of everyday life. I'm Rabbi Jonasson Goldson, and I'd like to welcome my guests for what I believe is the first all-male panel since I started this program. Uh, it was not by design, just the way it worked out. We have Mark Brown back with us again, world champion speaker, executive coach, and an artificial intelligence software advisor. Mm. Lieutenant Colonel J.C. Glick is a retired Army Ranger. He's a leadership, strategy, and culture advisor, as well as an author and TEDx speaker. And for the first time, I'm grappling with Gray, Nick Sternberg, who is interim CEO of Hope and Change. He's a writer, creativity consultant, and LinkedIn provocateur. And here is today's ethics challenge. The entire country has followed the story of Buffalo Bill's safety, Damar Hamlin, Damar Hamlin, his dramatic collapse during the game against Cincinnati Bengals, his suspension between life and death, and his remarkable path toward recovery. Our collective obsession with these events raises a number of points for reflection. As Mr. Hamlin was being resuscitated on the field, Fox Sport Sports pundit Skip Bayless tweeted, no doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of the game, but how? This late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome, which suddenly seems so irrelevant. Mr. Bayless was attacked from all sides for his inhumanity, but his observation opens the door for further discussion. Rocky's pitcher, Juan Nicasio was carried off the field after being hit in the head by a line drive in 2011. The Rockies went on to lose to the Washington Nationals. In 2008, St. Louis Cardinal Juan Encarcion was hit by a foul ball that ended his career and may have cost him his vision, but the game went on. How do we decide when life goes on and when respect requires us to suspend normal activity? Furthermore, why did this incident capture national attention overshadowing objectively more profound tragedies that fill the headlines. Should we be re-examining our priorities or is there something exceptional about this story? Finally, a Wall Street Journal editorial contrasted past incidents of coaches fired for leading team prayers with the midfield prayers offered up for DeMar Hamlin's recovery. If public prayer is wrong sometimes, shouldn't it be wrong all the time? What are we to make of these apparent inconsistencies, and what should our approach be to individual tragedy that mars public events? Lots to think about, and the floor is open. You know, Rabbi, in the film Sound of Music, Maria leads the Von Trapp kids in a song that says, let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. Today, I want to flip that script and start at the very end. The last question you asked was, what are we to make of these apparent inconsistencies and what should our approach be to individual tragedy that mars public events? The last question is, what should our approach be to individual tragedy that mars public events? Unfortunately, that's a very subjective question because we'll have differing opinions. And based upon my Jamaican background upbringing, I tend to lean more towards being concerned about the individual tragedy that mars a public event, particularly if one could say, well, a public event is by and large entertainment. How can you measure the value of, of your potential loss of life over what we may consider to be entertainment. Conversely, there are those who will say, yes, that's true. It is entertainment, but we're paying these individuals ridiculous, insane sums of money to perform for our entertainment. Some people are wagering on the event, or it's more than just entertainment. It could affect our income. It could affect our, our lifestyle. But yet, I lean towards concern for human life. And it's hard for me to not place greater value personally on the human life 
in the face of a tragedy, particularly since the softness of my heart says, when someone is injured, my mind can't focus on the other activities. My heart goes out towards the individual. So my first answer is the last question. I tend to lean more towards the value of the human life. I think uh, I, I think in this case, you know, you, you you mentioned why did this this game? Why was why did it capture everybody? I mean that that one's almost the most simple one to attack, which is it was Monday Night Football. It is the only game that's on. It's on during prime time, so it it has a pretty large uh, audience. And I think that if that was a Sunday game where that game might have been postponed, other games still would have gone on. They wouldn't have ceased playing in the NFL. Um, but I think that, you know, and I love that, you, that you're bringing up these other, these other games where other people were injured, you know, catastrophically. I really think that we can't look at these and put an absolute on them, right? I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to, to be friends with Sean McDermott, the head coach of the, of the Bills. And I could see in his face how upset he was. I could, you could see how upset the players were. I think that if you're in one of those baseball games where somebody gets hit with a line drive and I'm looking at the players and they look unable to continue, then I make a decision. If, if you could look at that field and say, okay, people are okay. But even the other team was clearly shook. And I think that you have to make a, a situational decision on saying, you know what? I don't think we can do this right now. This isn't the right time to do it. And it wasn't for the people, the game. It was for the people who played the game, who were right there in the, you know, where the rubber meets the road. And I think that's, that's something that has to be considered. Maybe in those other ones, you know, the, the coaches looked at their baseball teams or whatever and said, hey, we're, we're okay. Like, we're, like, you know, maybe he went off and was like, you know, thumbs up. It's a very different situation than he's not, he's not responding and they're all right there. And so I think that has something, that, that's something that needs to be considered. I'm glad you brought that up because I hadn't really hadn't given consideration to whose call was it to stop the game. Um, do, do you know that it was the coach's call, or are yes. you assuming that? No, you know it, that was, was? it was. So the coaches, the coaches got together and uh -huh. um, and you know again the the commissioner who's a, who who listens was like the coaches said we we can't do this. Yeah, uh, and so that's really an interesting. I know what you're saying is that the coaches read the players. It wasn't about some sort of moral or ethical decision, really. It was about the practicality of, is this, are the, are the, are the people who are participants, are they in a frame of mind where they can actually go on? And maybe they could have said, well, you're going to do it anyway. So I guess the ethic element is to read their circumstance, read their state of mind, and respond to that. Nick, what do you think? <laughs> um, well, I didn't see the game. I saw the play. I saw the reactions and I saw, I guess, just the controversy that ensued. Um, I agree that it's hard to make a call universally. Um, I agree with JC on that and where it's kind of a judgment call based on the moment. And I guess then the question is, what was the moment? And I guess to me, that might be one of the most interesting parts of it would be, why was this, why did this have any more gravity? And I guess you could describe that like it's never happened since the 1970s, I think. I don't think we've had an NFL player completely collapse like that. I know people have had neck injuries and other catastrophic in injuries, but this was the first time I think that's happened in my lifetime. So I think the unusual nature of it was bringing an assumption that he might die. And whether, you know, whether they knew that he was resuscitated or whether they knew what his chances were when they called the game, I don't, I don't know at what time they called the game. Um, but 
I mean, I think the severity probably had something to do with it, but also, not to sound cynical, but I wonder if there is a public opinion danger that didn't exist in the past uh, with the NFL um, and maybe a concern is elevated because of that, like a public scrutiny that didn't exist for the NFL in the past. Yeah, that might be something worth uh, giving some thought to. Is how much do we allow our decisions to be influenced by what other people will think as opposed to what's the right call on the ground? I mean, I, I would say that there's <laughs> probably an argument to call a game every time someone is like on a stretcher with an unknown outcome, but this was just such a dramatic um I think it was just the dramatic nature shocked everyone and gave everyone a, a real scare. And they said, you know, they just, they followed their heart, I guess. I mean, I hope, I guess, I hope that's the reason. What about taking it, uh, zooming out now and looking at the, at the public reaction over time there's, there is such a national obsession with this story. And yet, you know, you've still got the Ukraine war going on. You've got chaos in Congress. Of course, that's nothing new. <laughs> um, you know, all sorts of tragedies around the world. And there's so much fixation on this one. Um, what do we make of that? Isn't it the uh, isn't it the state that we're kind of in right now, right? The, the about you know six to eight seconds of attention of the uh, of the average American, where um, and, and I would argue that um, Hamlin, be, you know, ever since they've kind of announced and he's and he's been off ventilators and he's you know he's responding now, he's not news, right? So there's this. I think that regardless of, of what the event is, you have this. 48 to 72 hour national uproar of whatever it is, whatever side you're on. Um, and what I think is, I don't wanna say funny, unfortunate for those like Skip Bayless and Steve Smith and those individuals, they wanna maintain the relevance during those moments. So they step forward and there's risk with stepping forward and saying something um, and there's risk with trying to maintain your relevance when uh, there's a there's a really funny comedian and he's really inappropriate so rabbi i would not expect you to know him but anthony jeselnik who he's on twitter all the time and he basically if there's a, a catastrophic event he tweets something really inappropriate about it on on twitter and people say well like why do you do that he goes because the people that are dealing with the catastrophe are not on twitter it's these people who want to maintain the relevance of, look at me, I feel bad too. I, oh, hearts and prayers up to, that, that's, that's where our society is now. And it's unfortunate that that's where we are. We, we think that we need to make a statement in these, in these 72, 48 hour to 72 hour uh, spans where something's really big and we want to maintain relevance and we want to be viral or whatever. And unfortunately that, that can have negative consequences. But I think that's why, you know, I don't know that it's any different than when the Ukraine war started 48 to 72 hours. We were talking about, maybe we even talked about that for a full week, but we're not talking about that much anymore. McCarthy got basically three days, right? I mean, what our attention span as a nation is so small. But I suppose also, as long as the outcome is uncertain, that makes the story continue to be relevant. The moment there is some sort of resolution, now we're all moving on to the next thing. Yeah, true. The next, the next story seems to take precedence very, very quickly. And <clears throat> excuse me. And this is not the first time you said, Rabbi, that this has happened. It's happened in other sports as well in other parts of the world. Back in 2021, during a European football soccer tournament. Then Mark's Christian Eriksson collapsed on the field. And he was treated, and after a lengthy delay, 
the game was continued. And I found a quick soundbite here on Yahoo what the doctor spoke about. He says, quote, it says, uh, he was taken to hospital and he suffered a cardiac arrest mid-match in Copenhagen, was taken to hospital soon afterwards before it was revealed post-match, he had effectively died before being resuscitated on the pitch. I was watching this live when it happened. Quote, he was gone. We did cardiac resus. It was a cardiac arrest, team Dr. Morton Boson said. How close were we to losing him? I don't know, but we got him back after one defib, so it's quite fast. They chose after a long delay to continue the game, and several pros decried them for it. That was a year and a half ago, and people say, oh yeah, he was the guy. But as JC says, it's kind of old news now. And what concerns me about that from an ethical standpoint is, does the duration of a news cycle determine what we see, what we deem to be ethical and moral and right? Is it about the next soundbite or the next news item? You know, Skip Bayless feels bored, bored enough to say, hey, how do you replay this game? It's so critical. The season is too tight. And he gets yelled at for it. But does anyone remember what Skip Bayless says now? I don't even know. So my concern is, ethically, are we doing too much in terms of, or are we becoming calloused in our approach to this? And I don't have an answer for that question either. I think that's a really, you know, that, that last uh, comment of being callous. You know, if you look at it from a purely clinical perspective, you know, stopping the game really does nothing to help the, the player who's been hurt. So aside from, from the point you raised, JC, about whether the players are in a state to play or not, but if we, would, if we just uh, side, sidestep that issue for the moment, but you know, what do we accomplish? People paid money to come. There's a, there's a league that, that needs this game resolved. The player is being treated as best he can be treated. And what is accomplished by bringing the game to a halt? And yet, as you say, Mark, Sometimes pure rationality is not compatible with our humanity. Mm. And that we make ourselves increasingly callous if we don't have some kind of response. We just can't go on with business as usual. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of um, the 19, um, was it 1980 Olympics, 1970. Yeah. When, when Jimmy Carter was president, the, the Russians went into Afghanistan and, um, and Carter said, we aren't going to go. And the, and the, and the Olympic Games are going to be held in Russia. Yeah. In the Soviet yeah. Union. And Carter said, we're not going to participate. And, and of course, he got a lot of flack for that. And although I was not a fan of Carter, um, I felt that there was something significant to that decision. You just can't go on with business as usual in the face of something that's really horrific. And that finding that right balance between what rational thinking says and what humanity says, well, that's why we have these kinds of discussions, because it's not an easy call. It's a balance between practicality and empathy. Yes, exactly. You said so quickly what it took me so long to say. <laughs> no, but but that's but 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 that's what inspired me is what she said is that is is that and I think that and I'd love to believe that the NFL does I know how coach felt. There was empathy. I also think that the practicality that they have to have as a league is we do pay guys a lot of money. We make a lot of money. And if we continue with this game and say, well, it was really important, we're going to lose people. We're going to lose more people than we've lost with some other stuff that we've done. I think there's a practicality to that as well. How do you weigh what's more valuable, right? And I'm not sure I have an answer for that. Has there been anybody who actually was unconscious while a game went on like that? I, I mean... Was that player you're talking about, the Denmark player, was he resuscitated before they continued play? They put him, well, he, it was a long suspension. And it, the world was cringing because- I mean, he, I, Yeah, I remember. I just can't remember if the timing was- but, and, they, they, and they got him off 
And I, I was surprised they continued the game, quite honestly. And maybe they thought, you know what? It'd be a good distraction. Keep playing so they don't think too much about him. He's in good hands. He's fine. We find out later they lost him on the field, had to, had to defib him to get him back. We, we, we see bodies. We don't know what's happening. But maybe the thinking was, look, they've traveled internationally all over the world to come here. People have bought these tickets. Let's let the game continue. Put him in our prayers. And that way we will all be thinking, is Christian okay? Is he going to make it? Is he all right? And that could be one perspective that the leadership took. And they got flack for that also. But again, it's what is the best solution here? Because one may say, we can't risk losing the money. Oh, you know what? More compassion. But look, if they play, their minds won't be on him. Let's get the game to finish and follow up later. He's in good hands. He's going to be fine. You know, and whatever call they make, they're going to get flack. I mean, <laughs> nobody's going to be happy with, I mean, everybody won't be happy with either call. Yeah. The question about whether you're being made more callous in your, in your sort of media cycle adaptation, or yeah. I think that that's kind of what you were talking about, Mark, like the, the idea that you're adapting to a short media cycle and in a kind of lack of empathy it's like a reflexive um, thing, I think. And, and, and when you look at it, the moral value, and from a media perspective, I think this is something that people have noted, the, the shortness of the cycle is a moral reinforcement. It's, hmm. it's not that you are a necessarily callous, but that I think it's that media is enforcing a certain moral value through its shortness, if that makes sense, or the short-termness of it has a moral connotation that people then, I think, respond to and maybe even internalize. Uh, and that's, that's a concern. I mean, I think when we talk about attention spans, it's like, well, if you've ever taken a breath from all this and taken a few weeks off of being online, et cetera, or even just not watching news, you notice it's immediate, You're, you recover. Like you, you have this like ability to heal from this. So it's not, I don't even know that it's like an attention span thing as much as just a constantly reinforced, and I would say heavily moral, there are moral connotations to that being reinforced in that when you move on from something, it doesn't matter anymore, even though it might matter to you. Optically, it doesn't matter because it's no longer news. Hmm. So, so what does that mean? You know, and I think like just one more little thing, which maybe I shouldn't say, but the elephant in the room about this conversation is that the biggest uproar of this was about the vaccine. It wasn't about his health outside of that. The, the biggest media driver of this story was, was he vaccinated? And frankly, I think that's, I mean, it might be sort of a, a taboo to talk about, but I think that's kind of like the, that's the thing to talk about with this story, I think, is that was the reason it was getting so much cycling in social media. And that's one of the reasons it was a big story. Let me, let me add something. I just, I just um, heard this today. I have a, a friend who's a cardiologist, retired cardiologist, and he was telling me that he had... He knows someone who, who had a close relative who was, and this was before COVID, was, um, was playing uh, softball, young woman playing softball. And she um, slid into second base and um, landed on her chest and died on the spot. He said, there is a something in the timing of the heart he said it's it's virtually a nanosecond. It, it's almost immeasurable how short it is. But if there's a trauma in exactly that moment, it can just shut the whole system down. I think and a lot of doctors were saying that. Like yeah. that was the first thing that came up was like 10 different doctors were suddenly on television talking about commotio cordis as if that was yeah, exactly. like the most normal thing in the world. And everyone said, I've never heard of this before. And then a bunch of people would say, oh, it's very simple. It happens all the time. Go on Google and search it. And I was thinking, like, <laughs> what, what is going on here? Like, I, I didn't have an agenda 
when it happened. But when people asked if he had gotten the shots, I didn't have a, a, a crazy reaction. I just thought, well, that would be interesting because a lot of people have been wondering why athletes are collapsing. And then the question is, well, are they really collapsing? Or is that just, I mean, this is going back to that optical question, which is, I don't think anyone is qualified to talk about this from a scientific perspective, but we're still going to. So optically, if people are wondering why athletes are collapsing and a really high profile athlete collapses and it looks like he might die in a league that requires the vaccine for people who are in the highest risk group of anyone in the world for, for myocarditis and pericarditis, like, I guess it's a valid question is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that anyone has the right to declare it. No one, I, no one I know was saying, oh, I know what happened. I, it was the, it was like, well, is it a question we can ask? You know, we, we should be able to raise questions with, with, good, with good faith and, and not be pre presumed to be advancing political agendas. Um, unfortunately, that's not quite the world we live in. I mean, I, I completely agree. I just think that the methods that we have right now to sort of control discourse are failing miserably. And one of the reasons I think the story got so much play was because the outrage against the question has been going for the last year it was like, are we seeing an uptick in heart issues? Everyone has their anecdotal thing. My cardiologist talked me off of getting the shot because I had a pre-existing condition. That's my story. Does that mean that there's an issue? No, it just means we are in a cycle of doubt. And I believe we have a, le a legitimation crisis of, of authority right now. And I think that the problem that we're facing is going to get much bigger if we just keep saying, well, try and be sensitive. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm extremely sensitive. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very sensitive. I just don't think you can solve it by saying, don't talk about that. Mm. Yeah. And, and like, again, that's, that's why we're here. And, you know, it's funny because uh, my cardiologist has been nagging me to get a second booster um, despite having a heart condition. Hey, yeah. So you know, <laughs> the, the opinions are all over the map. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's not my cardiologist didn't influence me that much. I, I wasn't looking to get it just because I wasn't required. I didn't feel like it was something that I wanted to do. I wasn't mandated to do it. So even if he had said you should get it, I probably wouldn't have anyway. But that's not, again, that doesn't make me at odds with someone who says it was commotio cordis. It's just a question. Right. Should we investigate this? Is this happening to athletes? That was the that was the conversation I was hearing about tomorrow. And I, and I think and, and I think that 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 actually is is really what we're talking about when we talk about our ethics and our moral morals. Is we have gone into a world of absolutes. If you ask a question that's truly curious, like "Hey, I wonder," well, no, absolutely, he's a conspiracy theorist. If you say, well, it was this, well, absolutely, you're pro-vax or what, but we have, we have gone to this place where Skip Bayless is an uncaring, I don't think that Skip Bayless, I don't no. know Skip Bayless, I don't, but the truth is I don't care for him because I, I don't like his take on stuff, but I don't think he's a bad dude, he, he said something, and, and, and to a certain extent, he brought it on himself in an effort to stay relevant, he said something, nobody Nobody asked for his opinion. He felt he needed to give it. <laughs> he put it out there. I, I'm not going to vilify the guy because he said something that was, I don't know, less than thoughtful. If we expect the Skip Baylesses of the world, the Steve Smiths of the world, to be thoughtful in their commentary, and we're looking to them for thoughtfulness, we're probably looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Mark, you want to take the last word? We didn't have a chance, by the way, to address one quick question you asked, and it was, uh, if public prayer is wrong sometimes, shouldn't it be wrong all the time? But I fear yeah. if, I, if I go too deep into that, we'll run over time. Yeah, um, yeah. I may have to wait for a future conversation. But it would be, be a good convo because very I... Very much I on my radar, too. So, yeah. 
It's, uh, you know, it's just, there, there's a, if, you, if you're old enough to remember the old uh, episodes of MASH, um, you know, there's one episode that has always stuck in my mind that uh, Margaret Houlihan, the, the, the hard as nails head nurse, um, you know, she's directing everything while the while the the injured and the wounded come in and and you know the blood everywhere and people in pain and this little dog comes into the camp and she's saying get that dog out of here and and the dog's running around and it gets hit by a jeep and killed and she breaks down in tears and she's furious with herself that how can I be insensitive and hold myself together to all this carnage around me and the death of a dog breaks me down? And, and they have to explain to her that this is part of the way we're designed. We build defense mechanisms. And the defense mechanism is designed to protect us from what we're expecting have to deal with. And when something comes out of the blue, and there was something about this story that was just so unexpected, I think that may have a lot to do with the national obsession. That, you know, there's just, there's a human element here. And I think well, one of the things we've been talking about is that, you know, we, our culture has reached a point where our humanity is really in danger. There is so much unwillingness to engage people on a human level. Everything's ideology. Everything's um, posturing. Everything's politics. And here's an issue that transcends all of that, aside from the vaccination issue. <laughs> but just the, 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 the tragedy of this young man hanging between life and death, um, I think that... You know, it's been it's been perhaps good for us collectively, especially because the outcome has been has been positive. But uh, I think maybe it's helped uh, at least for the moment recalibrate us. How long it lasts is a different story, but uh, we we need these kinds of reality checks. And ideally, not in a way that <laughs> not in a way that uh, puts life at risk. But um, and I think it goes to your point also, Nick, that uh, and JC, that we, you know, we it, we can't have these conversations. We need to have these conversations because that's how we stay in touch with our humanity. So uh, thank you all very much for the conversation. Uh, a lot of really astute and interesting points. Um, thank you, Mark Brown, JC Glick, and Nick Sternberg. Look forward to future conversations. Uh, for those of you who are watching or listening, if you have an ethical situation, scenario, or dilemma you'd like us to take up, please go to yonasandgoldson.com, use the contact information to submit your suggestion, and if it's something compelling, we will definitely take it up on a future episode. So thank you again, and uh, we look forward to uh, the next episode where we will grapple with the gray.